Support comes from Missouri Forest Products Association, committed to sustainable and sound conservation of the state's forests, which support more than 41,000 Missouri jobs, resulting in a $10 billion industry. Choosewood.com. From the St. Louis Public Radio newsroom, this is The Gateway. It's Friday, March 6th. I'm Eli Chen, in for Wayne Pratt. Ahead, families who live in neighborhoods where gunfire erupts on a regular basis often resort to creative ways to keep their children safe. Many practice what to do and where to hide when they hear shooting. But long-term exposure to gun violence comes with long-term consequences. They're maintaining their physical safety, but no one's addressing the emotional and the mental toll that this takes on individuals. Kara Anthony with Kaiser Health News reports on the impact gun violence is having on children in their own homes. First, the news. A businessman at the center of former St. Louis County Executive Steve Stanger's pay-to-play scheme was sentenced to nearly a year and a half in prison yesterday. St. Louis Public Radio's Jason Rosenbaum has more details on John Rollo's sentence. Rollo donated thousands of dollars to Stanger in exchange for county contracts for his companies. He was sentenced to 17 months in prison and will have to pay $130,000 in restitution to the St. Louis Economic Development Partnership. Rollo's attorney, John Rogers, had asked for probation and home confinement, citing Rollo's lack of a criminal record and family responsibilities. But Assistant U.S. Attorney Hal Goldsmith told the court that Rollo needed to be punished accordingly, especially since the Stanger scheme engendered distrust in St. Louis County government. Stanger was sentenced to nearly four years in prison last year. A spokesperson for the U.S. Attorney's Office declined to say if the investigation around Stanger's misdeeds was ongoing. I'm Jason Rosenbaum, St. Louis Public Radio. Washington University researchers are working on a vaccine that may someday help prevent people from being infected by the new coronavirus. Scientists from WashU School of Medicine are using a virus that's harmless to humans and are coating it with a protein from the virus that causes COVID-19. They hope this will generate an immune response that would make it a potential vaccine candidate. Microbiologist Sean Whelan is leading the research. He says it can take months of human and animal trials to develop vaccines. So I'm hoping that this will turn out to be faster than what historically has been possible, but making a prediction about how long it will take is really quite challenging. Whelan discussed his research yesterday on St. Louis on the Air. The Missouri Senate is expected to take up a measure next week that would implement a statewide prescription drug monitoring program. For years, the idea has been discussed but failed to pass. St. Louis Public Radio State House reporter Jacqueline Driscoll has more on the likelihood of it passing this year. Majority Floor Leader Caleb Rowden from Columbia says he's always optimistic the program will pass, and he says he's doing what he can to make that happen. But the idea of a government list irks some of the conservative members in the chamber, and those concerns haven't changed. Still, Rowden says he's hoping this year will be the year he can check it off his list. Knowing that we're the only state left that hasn't done this, uh, there, there's just a sense of, there, there is a sense of inevitability here. PDMPs are databases designed to stop the misuse and abuse of opioids. The House passed the proposal last month. If the Senate approves the idea, it will head to the governor's desk. In Jefferson City, I'm Jacqueline Driscoll, St. Louis Public Radio. In the first two months of this year, more than a dozen children in the St. Louis area were shot. Four of them died. Living in that kind of violence has forced some families to come up with unexpected ways to keep their children safe. And the stress of growing up in these conditions could have long-lasting effects into adulthood. Kara Anthony of Kaiser Health News reports. She begins at a Hamilton Heights daycare on the city's west side. I'm at Little Explorers Learning Center. O-R-A-N-G-E. Teacher Tawanda Brand is drilling the kids on their spelling. Brand nods, giving her approval. Then it's time for a different kind of drill. Today, Brand is teaching them what to do when gunfire erupts nearby. Dory Explorer, where are we going? Dora is a code word. It's a signal for the kids to drop to the floor. Most of the children get down. Others walk around, sending Brand on a chase as she tries to corral the group. And even though today's drill sounds playful, sometimes it's not a game. Sometimes the danger is real. Daycare director Tess Trice says a bullet came through the window last year while the children were inside. Then, the very next day, 
bullets flew again. And we heard gunshots, we got on the floor. Eventually when we got up and looked out the window, we saw a body out there. When police tape goes up in the neighborhood, it's a hurtful reminder that adults have to find ways to keep children safe. That's why drills aren't just happening at daycares, they're also happening at home. At their apartment in East St. Louis, 13-year-old Anaja and her siblings hide in the dark. We turn the TV down, we turn the lights off, and we hurry up and get down on the ground. The family practices what to do when they hear gunshots. Mom, Kiana Hicks, tells the kids to get ready. Then their grandmother claps her hands to simulate the sound of gunfire. Like shots fired. What would you do? Get on the hey. ground. Everybody. Okay, I'm going to make the noise. And that's how it's done. All four children stay flat on the floor, head down, until their mother tells them that it's okay to get up. Hicks says she drills the kids a few times a month to keep them prepared. Across the river in North St. Louis, 16-year-old Mariah says even though she knows what to do when bullets fly, she still has a difficult time processing the sound of violence. Last winter, she was babysitting her little cousins when... All of a sudden, I heard the loudest gunshots I've ever heard in my life. My ears rung. It couldn't have been no further than, like, my doorstep. I immediately dropped to the floor, and then in a split second, the second thing that ran through my head is like, oh, my God, the kids. I just see, like, the kids, like, and they're just, like, down there. And Anaya is six, and her brother is three, and Anaya is just telling him, like, no, you have to stay down. You can't move, Junior. Like, stop playing around. This is serious. Like, Mama said, if I hear a big noise, don't move. Everyone walked away physically okay that day. But later that night, Mariah says she pulled out strands of her hair to relieve the stress. For her, the sound of gunfire has become an anxiety trigger that's hard to deal with. That's why licensed professional counselor Lakeisha Davis encourages parents to teach their kids how to cope. She says getting on the floor only explains how they're maintaining their physical safety, but no one's addressing the emotional and the mental toll that this takes on individuals. Davis heads up one of the few mental health agencies for kids in St. Louis. For 20 years, she's been working with children who have experienced trauma. Can you imagine as a child, you are sleeping, you know, no care in the world as you sleep and being jarred out of your sleep to get under the bed and hide. That's one example of what experts call an adverse childhood experience, often referred to as ACEs. Davis says kids who experience violence or witness it frequently are more likely to have chronic health issues such as high blood pressure, diabetes, and depression as adults. You know, our brain is impacted by this fight or flight response. That's supposed to happen in rare instances, you know, but when you're having them happen every single day, you're having these chemicals released in the brain on a daily basis. How does that affect you as you get older? But future health problems are hard to think about when you're just trying to survive. That's why Mariah's mom, Isha Taylor, tries to minimize the violence around them. You have to get over it. You have to strive to overcome it. There's, there's absolutely nothing I can do about it. You know what I mean? And I don't harp on it. She's just trying to teach her daughter to be resilient. For St. Louis Public Radio, I'm Carrie Anthony. That piece was edited by Kaiser Health News and Sheila Newman, the executive editor of St. Louis Public Radio. Music by Ryan McNeely of Adult Fur. I'm Eli Chen. And from the St. Louis Public Radio newsroom, this has been The Gateway. Support comes from the Missouri Forest Products Association. Missouri produces wood pallets, railroad ties, white oak barrels, hardwood floors, and more. Details on the variety of products made in the state are at ChooseWood.com.